Despite the best efforts of many members of the National Association of Black Journalists, yes, that is a real group. The world did not stop, even though they were trying to convince us that because a 12-year-old black girl in Northern Virginia was the victim of, well, really two things. Uh, she was the victim of uh, three white boys, held her down, cut her hair, stole her lunch money, and called her all sorts of racial epithets. But again, it wasn't just that one thing. It was a second thing. It was a bigger thing. They tried to convince us this was happening to little black children all around the country. White people, that's what we do. We just go around and pick on little black girls because that's how we get our jollies. This happening at such a young age. We're talking about all sixth graders here. So when you look at that, you know, you ask yourself, like, how can people hate and be so cruel at such a young age? And it's because they're taught that way. And we've got to do better. I, I agree. Thank you for connecting it to the Crown Act, because uh, that's one of the things I was thinking about as well. Uh, having people be used to seeing people from different backgrounds who look different ways and being more tolerant and accepting and having that hopefully trickle, trickle down. I was angered watching the piece to see her family having to deal with what happened to their child, but then also be pleading for there to be some semblance of, of justice and peace for her moving forward with the repercussions for the kids. They shouldn't have to deal with that. They should have to only be able to focus on Amari. The other thing that struck me about the story is that she was afraid and didn't tell anybody immediately when this happened. Right. And then we find out that this kind of bullying had been going on for quite oh, some wow. time. Her so, school lunch stolen every day this week. So it's no telling how many other kids are suffering in silence and internalizing yes. this kind of hatred and bullying because this really does can cause people to change the way they feel about themselves. It looks like she has good people around her that can prevent that from happening and certainly will keep following the story. And it's an opportunity for the school to get out in front and actually teach these kids how they're supposed to treat one another yes. by their handling of this case. So we'll continue to hold their feet to the fire on that end. Definitely. And Amari, I know you're watching. You're a beautiful girl. We Very love much you. So. And you have a lot of support. Just check out social yes. media. It's blowing up. Thank you for telling your story, girls. A lot of yeah. other people out there like that. Well, that was the fantasy. It's been exposed as a big fat lie. And now here's the reality every day black crime continues to spiral out of the out of control out of the ability of people at the National Association of Black Journalists to ignore, deny, condone, excuse, encourage, and even lie about it. Some new video now of the man who police say did that. Look at that. Broke a stranger's jaw with a single punch. Surveillance cameras caught that moment. That woman was knocked out cold on a sidewalk in Brooklyn. And tonight, News 4's Ray Vietta live near that scene following the search for that attacker. Ray, what a shot. Natalie, yeah, Natalie, that knockout was so bad. One minute, the woman is walking down this street. The next, she wakes up in a hospital bed. As you mentioned, surveillance video captured that suspect walking away after knocking that woman out. Now the search is on. The video is short, but the impact lasting. A 71-year-old woman walking down New York Avenue knocked to the ground. It happened almost two weeks ago, but police just shared this short video and froze it right before impact. This store owner says the victim was left unconscious. When she first came in, I was asking her, where were you? She didn't even know where she was. I said, um, where did you fall? She said, I don't know, but it's somewhere around here. Now police hope these pictures. This guy look familiar to you at all? No. Spark some information as they search for the suspect who's walking down the street, appearing calm. A random attack, now a specific search for this man. That's messed up, man. How would you describe this neighborhood, this area? It's cool. It's progressing. Yeah, new real estate here. And then it happened right in front of the new houses. I got a kick out of that last guy there going, well, this couldn't happen in a progressive neighborhood. We've got uh, we've got new apartments over here. I guess this guy obviously did not read Don't Make the Black Kids Angry, where we reproduced an article from the New York Post where cops in New York are begging people who move into these neighborhoods to don't be idiots. You're moving into these old neighborhoods. You're fixing up the houses. You think they're safe a block away. There's a huge there's a huge complex of public housing with lots and lots of fellas living in there and people are targets for stuff just like this and the reporter goes wow that's shocking oh yeah how many episodes of black violence against um jewish people have there been in brooklyn 
Now, don't give me the shocking routine. Lots and lots of people know about it in New York. Apparently, everybody except the people we put in charge of reporting on it. Of course, it's not just up in New York. We want to see some really ridiculous, insane episodes of black violence against old people, young people, black people, white people, gay people, straight people, handicapped people, able people, uh, chick, uh, kitties, puppies, turtles, chickens, ostriches, chiropractors. I mean, we could see that every day. So our only challenge is how do we narrow it down when this one's pretty bad. Say two 14 year old boys attacked a man in a wheelchair and robbed him on a light rail platform near the state capitol. The robbery was captured on surveillance video. We want to warn you the images are disturbing. The incident happened Sunday, August 25th at 4 30 in the afternoon. The two boys approached the man on bicycles, eventually knocking him over and stealing what appears to be his cell phone. Esme Murphy reports on the incident and how Metro Transit riders are reacting. That attack happened right here on this eastbound platform. The man in the wheelchair, he was sitting right here when the two young men on bicycles approached him. From two different angles, the surveillance cameras capture what happens. The two teens harassing the man. He tries to hide his phone. They continue to go after it, eventually grabbing it and knocking him backward before taking off. Metro Transit riders we showed the video to were shocked. Wow. That's terrible. This wasn't, it, this wasn't much better. Again, these are recent stories, black on handicapped violence. Start with a vicious attack. Who would stoop so low? Philadelphia police say the guys in this video targeted a man, targeted a man with special needs. The attack so cruel, police say one of the guys pointed a gun at his head. I'm Shayna Humphreys. The video is disturbing, to say the least. Now police want to find the men responsible. Fox 29's Seanette Wilson joins us live at Philadelphia Police Headquarters. Seanette. Well, Shana, at one point, four men are seen in the video. Police have released a description of three of them. Police blurred the victim's face, but the video clearly shows what the suspects are doing to that man. Outrageous, you know what I mean? For, for people to live like that. Upsetting video captured on a business surveillance camera in Germantown. Carrie Atkins is disgusted watching it. I see the guy here laughing. It's not funny. I don't think there's nothing funny about that, you know what I mean? That's going to be just somebody's son. The video shows a group of men surrounding the victim who police say has special needs. The 45-year-old victim is washing a car of one of the suspects when the men begin to assault him. Police say one pulls out a gun and points it at the victim's head as the others stand by laughing. Earl Murray is in disbelief watching it too. A total disgrace. The video goes on to show the suspects also hitting the victim in the back of the head as he washes the car. Nothing surprises me today, but I still say it's, it's sad, it's a shame. Police say it happened on the 300 block of West Chelton Avenue around 1.30 last Saturday morning. They just released the video today. They also say the suspect with the 9mm handgun fires it four different times while standing right behind the victim, letting off 13 shots. They all eventually take off. And this little episode in a parking lot checks off a lot of boxes. You got a black woman attacking a woman, attacking an Hispanic, attacking who the hell knows who they were attacking. It's just a violent thing. Get out the car! Okay. Get out the car! Get out! I don't give Pégale, a fuck about that! Get out the car! Get out the car! Pincha negra culera! Babosa! Estupida! Dale, dale, cabrón! Get some bitch! Get out the car! I just got an email from one of our keener correspondents out in Sacramento, California. He said, hey, Colin, check out this Scott Adams. You know Scott Adams? He's the guy who does Dilbert. I, I follow him on Twitter. He's usually pretty smart, usually pretty good, gets to the core of it. But he, there was about a five-minute segment in there where he talks about where somebody brings up the fact that there's a race war in this country. And he kind of scoffs at it. He doesn't know anything about it. He doesn't know anything. He doesn't know anybody who knows anything about it. How could anybody say anything as stupid as that? Well, Scott, here's the thing. There's a race war going on in this country. It's a war 
black people have de- of, of bl- not just violence, of hostility that black people have declared on white people, Asian people, young people, old people, Hispanic people, you name it. And just because you're not aware of it, Scott, that does not mean it doesn't exist. We're going to be talking about that on my podcast uh, tonight and tomorrow. So I hope you get a chance to check that out. We're going to give Scott Dilbert a little, Scott Adams of Dilbert fame, a little lesson on what's really going on in this country. I don't think Scott's ever seen those videos. Please, sir. I want some more. Or he doesn't really know what they mean. Because knowing what they mean, even for Scott Adams, that's a bridge too far. That's a bridge called not making the black kids angry.